In Lesson 9-2 and 8-3, we're going to talk about the quadratic formula and complex answers. So after this video, we'll be able to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula, and we'll be able to create quadratic equations uh, from complex solutions. So the reason why we use the qu quadratic formula is when there is nothing else that we can do. So when the other methods aren't easy to use or impossible to use, we use the quadratic formula. So we use this when no other method can be used. But you can use the quadratic formula for everything. It's just a lot of calculation and it's easy to make a mistake. So you want to try to factor first or use the square root method first or complete the square first uh, before you use the quadratic formula. But if you use the quadratic formula, you need the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. So you need zero by itself on one side and then uh, ax squared plus bx plus c on the other side because you're going to use a, b, and c in the formula for finding your answers or your solutions. So to find my answers, my roots uh, of this equation or equations of this form, I know that my x values, when y is equal to 0, my x values are going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This gives me two different answers. Since I see this plus or minus, I know I have two different answers here, two different solutions. All right, let's try an example. So first one, I have x squared is equal to 6 times x plus 1. This is not an ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 form. I don't have 0 on one side by itself. Um, I also need to do some distributing. So I need to change the way that this looks before I can actually use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to distribute this 6 to everything in parentheses. I'm going to get x squared is equal to 6x plus 6. And then I want to get everything to one side. So I like the coefficient of x squared to be 1. So I'm going to subtract 6x and 6 on both sides to get those onto the other side so that the x squared stays positive. I'll have x squared minus 6x minus 6 is equal to 0. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label what's my a, b, and c. I know my a is the number in front of x squared, so the a is 1. I know b is the number in front of x, so it's negative 6. And c is the constant that I have at the end, so it's negative 6 as well. Then I'm going to use the formula. So I have the formula. I'm going to just rewrite it. I know my, my x values when y is equal to 0, so my roots or my solutions are going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And from here, I'm going to now just plug in that a, b, and c. So I have... A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is negative 6 as well. I like to write this and just put parentheses everywhere I see a letter that I'm going to plug in. And then I just fill everything in at one time. So I'm putting parentheses everywhere I see a letter that I need to replace with a number. I'm going to replace my Bs first. Those are first. I put uh, my B negative 6 here. And I put it here. Then I replace my A's. Uh, so I know there's an A uh, after the 4. So A goes here. And there's an A in the denominator. So A goes there as well. Uh, I, lastly, I just have one C that I fill in. Um, so that I have negative 4AC inside of the square root. And then I just simplify. So uh, I'm going to start with I have n minus negative 6, which is positive 6 plus or minus, and then inside the square root, I want to do, I'm subtracting this entire thing. So the first thing I need to do, um, I got to make sure I do my order of operations in the correct order. I have to make sure I do 4 times a times c first. So uh, I'll have negative 6 squared gives me 36, and I'm subtracting 4 times, times 1 times negative 6, which is negative 24. So I'm subtracting negative 24. And that's all over 2. Then from there, I'm going to uh, just simplify what's inside of the square root. I have 6 plus or minus 
uh, 36, that's plus 24 if I have minus a negative. And that gives me the square root of 60 all over 2. Uh, one more thing that I have to do here is simplify if I possibly can. So take out the... Um, take out anything that I have in common in the numerator and denominator. So uh, I know that I have between the 6 and the 2, or, or actually, sorry, first thing I have to do is uh, simplify that square root of 60. So the square root of 60, just on the side here, I'm going to break it down into uh, if I can take out a perfect square. Um, there is a perfect square inside of 60, and that's 4. So I could break this down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 15, which gives me two square roots of 15, because I wanted to get a whole number, if I could, um, out of that. So I'm going to rewrite this. I have x is equal to 6 plus or minus uh, 2 square roots of 15 all over 2. Now I can see that all of these terms have 2 in common. So I'm going to take out a 2 in the numerator and take out a 2 in the denominator. I'm going to factor that out so I can cancel it. I have... A I'm going to rewrite the top as 2 times something. So it's 2 times 3 gives me 6. And then I have the plus or minus. And then 2 times, uh, sorry, oops. 2 times the square root of 15 gives me 2 square roots of 15. And then in the bottom, uh, 2 times 1 is going to give me 2. So now I can cancel out the 2 in the top and the bottom that I took out, that I factored out since everything is being multiplied. The only time I can cancel is when I have multiplication in the numerator and the denominator. So I can only have multiplication and because those other terms are in parentheses, I only have multiplication in the top and the bottom and I can cancel. Um, that gives me x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 15 is the final answer. Okay, if I wanted to write that as two separate answers, I would write x is equal to 3 plus the square root of 15 or x is equal to 3 minus the square root of 15, if I wanted to write it separately. Alright, next problem. I have negative 2x squared is equal to 4x plus 3. First thing that I want to do is get x. I like to have a positive coefficient for the is what I want, I need, in order to use the quadratic formula. And then I have 2x squared plus 4x plus 3 on the right. From there, I'm going to label what's my a, b, and c. I know my a is the number in front of x squared, which is 2. I know b is the number in front of x, which is 4. And I know c is equal to 3. Then I'm just going to plug those into my quadratic formula. Uh, so I'm going to start by just uh, putting... I, I'm not going to rewrite it again, but I'll zoom out so you can see it from above. I'm just going to put parentheses everywhere I need to fill in numbers. So I have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And then I'm going to put in all of, I'm going to substitute a, b, and c. So I have a is 2, b is 4, and c is 3. And then I just plug these in. Um, b's are going to come first, so I have negative b and b squared. Then I'm going to fill in my a's, so I have 2 here and 2 here. And then I'm going to fill in my c, which is just that one. Then I just simplify, so I have x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of. I have to do this first. I have to do all of that first. So 4 times 2, well, I have 16, 4 squared, minus... 4 times 2 times 3, that's uh, 8 times 3, which is 24, all over 4. And now I want to rewrite, simplify what's inside of the square root. So I have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of, that's negative 8, all over 4. On the side here, I'm going to just break down negative 8, the square root of negative 8. I know that's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 8. And uh, the square root of negative 1 is, sorry, it's i. So I have i times the square root of 8. Um, I can break down the square root of 8 a little further. So I know a perfect square inside is 4. So I can break this down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 so that I can turn the square root of 4 into a whole number, 2. And I have uh, 2 square roots of 2 is how eight breaks the square root of 8 breaks down. 
So I put the two of the whole number in front of the I and the square root after. And that is how I rewrite the square root of negative eight. So I'm gonna do that in my problem. I have X is equal to negative four plus or minus two I square root of two all over four. I can see that all of these terms have a two in common. So I can take a two out in the top and the bottom. And I can rewrite this as two times, uh, well, two times negative two gives me four. I have the plus or minus. Uh, two times i square times the square root of two gives me two i square roots of two. And then in the bottom, I have two times two gives me four. So my final answer, after I cancel out the two in the top and the bottom here, is going to be negative two plus or minus i square root of two all over two. And those are my two answers. On the next page, uh, I have same thing. I want to use the quadratic formula to solve these. First one, I have 3x squared plus 2x is equal to negative 4. I'm going to get that 4 on the other side. That's the easiest thing to do. Also give me a positive coefficient in front of x squared. So I have 3x squared plus 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. Um, I'm going to find my a, b, and c. I know my a is 3, b is equal to 2, c is equal to 4. I just plug these into my quadratic formula, and the quadratic formula is going to be, I'm just going to do it on the right here, I have x is equal to uh, negative b, so plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, and then I just plug in all of these things. So I have uh, c is 4, a is 3, b is 2, and I just plug those in. So I'm going to start with the b. b is 2. I plug that in where it goes. I plug in my a's here and here. And I plug in my c at the end there. And then I get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus. And then I have to do all of this because uh, multiplication comes before subtraction. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. And then that's all over 6. So my answer, when I simplify it inside of the square root, I'll get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 48 is negative 44 all over 6. On the side here, I'm going to uh, change the square root. Oops. The square root of negative 44. I know I can rewrite as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 44, which means I have an i there. So i times the square root of 44 is what I have. And then on the side, I just want to break down 44 because there is a perfect square inside of there that I can pull out. Uh, the perfect square is 4. I can pull out the square root of 4 because that's going to give me a whole number times the square root of 11. I can write that. And then I have two square roots of 11 instead of uh, the square root of 44. So if I simplify this further, I will have 2i square root of 11. And then I go back. And I plug that in. I have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus uh, 2i square root of 11 all over 6. And then I see if there's anything I have in common in, the, in all of my terms. And I do. I have a 2 in common that I can pull out. So again, I'm going to pull out a 2 in the top and the bottom. And I'm going to rewrite the top as 2 times negative 1, which gives me negative 2. I have plus or minus 2 times uh, i sorry, 2 times i square root 11 gives me 2i square root of 11, and that's all over uh, 2 times 3 gives me 6. I can now cancel out the 2 in the top and the bottom, and I'm left with x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 11 all over 3, and those are my two answers. All right, one more quadratic formula problem. I have x squared plus 8 is equal to 0, uh, here I don't have a b, I just have an a and a c, but that's okay, I can still use the form. Well, b is technically there, but I can technically write this as I have x squared plus 0x's plus 8 is equal to 0. So b is really 0. I didn't mean to say it's not a thing at all. <laughs> so a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to 8. And then I just plug those into my formula. So on the side, I'm going to write x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. 
and then I plug those numbers in, so I know B is equal to zero, uh, A, sorry, A is equal to one, and C is equal to eight. And then I just uh, rewrite this as, I don't need that negative zero in front, but I do need to keep the plus or minus. So I have plus or minus the square root of, that's zero minus four times eight, which is negative 32, all over two. And then on the side here, I'm just going to uh, break down the square root of negative 32. That breaks down into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 32. I know that means that this is i, so I have an i times the square root of 32. And then I'm going to break down the square root of 32 a little bit um, because I know there's a perfect square inside of there. So the biggest perfect square is what I want to take out. 4 is the factor that comes to mind first for 32, but the biggest perfect square will save me time. I won't have to uh, do an extra step. So I'm going to take out the biggest perfect square, which is 16. 16 times 2 gives me 32, so I could break the square root of 32 down into the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, which gives me 4 square roots of 2. And then if I rewrite i square root of 32, that means I have 4 i square root of 2. I always write the whole number in the front and the square root at the end if I have left over. Um, inside the square root. So now I'm going to just rewrite what I have up here. I have x is equal to plus or minus 4i square root of 2 all over 2. And then I see that I can uh, simplify that 4 and that 2 down to 2 over 1, uh, which is 4 and 2 have 2 in common, so I can divide 4 by 2 and 2 by 2. And I get my final answer is plus or minus 2i square root of 2. Those are my two answers. And then for the last problem here, I'm given uh, the roots are 2i and negative 2i. So those are complex roots. I'm going to do the same thing that I did when I was given roots that weren't complex numbers. Here are my answers for x, or my solutions to the quadratic equations are x is equal to 2i or x is equal to negative 2i because roots are just my x values of my solutions when y is equal to zero. So from here, I'm going to take, so I have x is equal to 2i, x is equal to negative 2i. I want two equations that are equal to zero so that when I multiply them together to get a quadratic equation, so I, I'll, I'll end up with x squared in it, um, the, the answer will be zero. I want zero uh, to be the answer. I want y to be equal to zero, the output to be zero. So I want to turn these uh, equations into equations that are equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 2i on both sides here. I'm going to add 2i on both sides here. And that's going to turn the equations into x minus 2i is equal to zero or x plus 2i is equal to zero. From there, I'm going to multiply these two expressions together. So I know that, whoops, let me pick this. Um, I know x minus 2i is 0 and x plus 2i is 0. So if I multiply these two things together, x minus 2i and x plus 2i, I'm going to get that is equal to 0. Because if one of those is 0, then if you multiply them together, it's going to be 0. And then I just FOIL. So I have, oops, I have x times x gives me x squared. x times uh, 2i gives me uh 2ix, and then if I multiply negative 2ix, uh, sorry, negative 2i times x, I get negative 2ix, and then negative 2i times negative, sorry, times positive 2i is negative 4i squared, and that's equal to zero. So uh, these two terms are going to cancel each other out. One's positive, one's negative, they're the same term, uh, but opposites, so they equal zero. And then I'll have x squared minus 4i squared is equal to 0. But every time I see an i squared, I need to change it to negative 1. So instead of writing i squared, I write negative 1. And then, so instead of, whoops, instead of writing i squared, I write negative 1. And then I just simplify this. I have x squared minus uh, 4 times negative 1, which is pl minus negative 4, so that's plus 4, is equal to 0. And that's my answer.